All Jeremy knows is the Paxmans are Yorkshire folk. So he's come to Yorkshire to find out more. I've always been very proud of the fact that I was born in Yorkshire. And Yorkshire is a, one of the very few counties that has a very definable sense of itself. I mean, no one ever says they come from Hertfordshire or Middlesex or somewhere. So I suppose I've been, I've been very conscious of it. I, and I've always said where you come from, you say you come from Yorkshire. But I was actually brought up in, in Worcestershire, really. And um, does it make me an authentic Yorkshireman? I don't know. It's for others to decide, I suppose. I'm not a professional Yorkshireman, though. It's a disgrace, isn't it? Look, there's not a single Starbucks in sight. We're going to go and see my Auntie Margaret, who is the oldest surviving member of the family on my father's side. My father actually lives in, in Australia and, and is not well these days. Um, so we're going to go and see her, and we'll find out what she can tell us about her father, my grandfather on that side of the family. She spent the whole of her life being um, taken for Shirley Williams and being accosted by people on trains who castigate her for Labour's uh, education policies in the 1960s. Um, but she's actually blameless of politics, I think. Now living in Selby, Margaret grew up with Jeremy's father in an affluent Bradford home. Hello, Auntie Mark. How are you? Nice to see you. Mm. Nice to see you. Nice Come to see in, you. Alan. Thank you. Oh, good. Just the thing. That's just what we need. Right mm. then. So, I've got some photographs to show you. Oh. That's Keith. That's your father. And that is me as a plump little really? girl. I can, actually, I can recognise him now. There's something yes. about the eyes, isn't there? Yeah, the eyes yeah. and the nose. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And that's a super picture. And that's my father on the right. Arthur in his suit, and isn't it that gorgeous hat? Yeah. And he's got his suit in a very jaunty angle yeah. with his bowler hat. Yes, An umbrella. Yeah. Mm. Was he a wealthy man or? No, he wasn't wealthy. No. But he was but something he was in, in the wool trade. In Yorkshire, we'd say he was well doing. Well doing. Well, doing. well, well doing. Yes. But what was he like? Very Your happy. Father. Very jolly. He always had a smile and um, generous, if he could afford to be. Oh, and he'd be present every night when he came home from work. So we a present every night? Every night we had a present, yes. Very Jolly. spoiled. And uh, as I say, we just liked by everybody. Arthur Paxman did well enough as a travelling salesman to put his son, Jeremy's father, through public school. But Margaret's got no idea how he started out. She only knows he had an elder brother, Thomas. To discover more about Arthur's background, they look at the 1881 Bradford census. 58 Rose... Oh. Ross Street or Rose Street? Yeah. Thomas Paxman, Paxman, head of the household. He's a mechanic. And then is Mary Jane and... And Arthur. That's, Arthur. that's your father? That's my father, yes. That's where born, Yorkshire, Bradford. In 1881, Arthur Paxman is two years old, living at 58 Ross Street with his parents and his elder brother, Thomas. No. Um, let's, let's see if we can look at the other one 10 years later and see what, see what happens. Look, this is your father, Arthur. my grandfather, Arthur. Arthur, and his brother, who are still living there, but yes. they're described they're just described as grandsons, but without any... There's no and parent or grandparent there at all. Who's a worsted spinner? Who's a worsted spinner, yeah. And he's and his brother's and a warehouseman. So Jim. Arthur was now... That looks like 12, 12. does it? 12, 12, and his brother was 17. 17. So what had happened to them, had they? Uh, yeah. Been an outbreak of an epidemic of something, or...? I don't know. What Hard happened? to lose both your parents by the time you're 12, 12, eh? The orphaned Arthur was spinning worsted, a wool-based yarn, by the age of 12. But what had become of Arthur's parents? When and how did Thomas and Mary Jane Paxman die? 
Jeremy visits Bradford Registry Office. Be careful, I'll be married off here. It's another one. Are you the same wedding as the one round the corner? Yeah. Oh, I see. Well, creep in. <laughs> Please ring bell for attention. Hello. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just put my head through and you hit it with a hammer. Um, I'm looking, please, for the death certificates for Thomas and Mary Paxman, my great-grandparents, sometime between 1881 and 1891. Death certificates. Death certificates, yeah. Yep, thank you. So Thomas Paxman died the 17th of April, 1888. This is pulmonaris of TB. Tin plate worker journeyman, 35 years old. And then his wife dies April 18, no, so January 1890, she dies. So it's less than two years later. She also dies of TB and exhaustion. Described as a charwoman widow of Thomas Paxman, tin plate worker. God. Hmm. Poor things. So she witnesses his death. And then the son, Arthur's older brother, witnesses his mother's death. TB and exhaustion. Charwoman. Um, so what does it um, tell us about my grandfather? Well, he lost both his parents by the time he was ten. Both of them to TB and exhaustion. He got a job by the time he was twelve in a woolen mill. It's a hard life. It's a very hard life. See, you shouldn't go in this family history business. It's just upsetting. Nothing you can do about it. I mean, it's... Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people must have lived like this and died like this. Hundreds of thousands. And I suppose it's, you know, it's just when it's just numbers like that, it doesn't really mean anything, but it means something when, I mean, I don't know these people, I wouldn't recognize them if, they, if I fell over them, but they're, you know, I'm connected to them. And it's that possessive thing. My great grandparents, God, we have it easy. Right, should we go on? Starting at the bottom of the textile trade, Arthur Paxman overcame adversity and worked his way up to become a successful sales rep in the same business. It was Arthur who set the Paxmans on the road to prosperity. <laughs>